Good day, everyone, and welcome to episode four of the HJC podcast. On today's podcast, we'll be serving up some southern fried boner sandwiches. With me today, Monday's writer, Sean. Sean, how are you? I'm doing great. Glad to be back. And Friday's writer, TC. How are you doing, TC? I'm doing well. I'm glad to be part of my first uh, podcast of the new format. Yeah, absolutely. Well, when it's weekly, we need lots of guests, so. That's true. You um, had to call up someone from the miners. I <laughs> uh, just wanted to get into something quickly before we start on the hockey topics, and that is how difficult it is to actually kind of break into the the hot hockey media world or or news business. Uh, we've been trying, let's say. I know, Sean, you emailed a team. No need to name the team, but just asking for a little bit of access and we got a very nice email back, but that pretty much said that we weren't a legitimate news source. And uh, today I got an email from another team that was looking to use images from our website, except the research that they had done, the images were just essentially they wanted to use a fake jersey for their for their source. And it just absolutely bothers me that I'm trying to use the website to legitimately get a job in some sort of sport capacity and there's people out there who are working for a team that can't even spot a fake jersey you know you know what i mean sean you you tried to go through this with with one team just to get some access to a jersey and it's kind of funny just how we're brushed aside yeah um it's very like they it seems to me that the reason why they do this is because it's like if they let one blog in they have to let them all in yeah and I, 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 can, I can get that. Uh, the wording that they used, I believe, was you have to be a legitimate news site. So that does kind of limit you to TSN and Sportsnet in Canada. Yeah. And how do you become a legitimate news site if you can't get access to the news? It's not like we were asking this team for any. Um, we weren't asking them for anything that would cost them extra money. You know, you were. No, I asked them. Yeah, I asked them to go get a high quality photo, or if they could send me a high quality photo of their special jerseys. Yeah. Um, and it's it's interesting because this is not a pro team. I, I didn't ask you know an NHL team for this. I asked a a major junior team. Yeah, and it's just and, it's just yeah. funny that they wouldn't. I mean, they were very polite in their response, but I just find it quite amusing that they wouldn't at least send along a photo or. And invite you for some sort of limited access because we wanted to do a story on the jersey and it would have been free publicity for them wouldn't it cost them anything no exactly um and that's how and that's how we i think like that's that what minor league teams and major junior teams want particularly i think this i'd say this is more of the more well-known ones but particularly the ones that you have out in rural canada I, th- I feel like that's a great opportunity for them that they're missing out on. Yeah, and for the team that I was contacted by, they are an NHL team, and they wanted to use an image of a fake jersey, and it was only apparently going to be on screen for two or three seconds. But just the fact that the person who contacted me said their job was researcher, and their research brought them to an image of a <laughs> fake jersey for the team they're supposed to be doing research for. And I'm sitting here trying to get a job somewhere in sports, and using the blog experience to try and get that job. And there's someone out there who may not have any experience in sports, but they, they seem to have this job. Anyways, I guess it's just, just some venting. Um, TC, where, where do you see HJC at at the moment? Because obviously we have stuff behind the scenes. We're always trying to get better. Just uh, quickly, where do you see HJC and, and maybe some things that we are doing or can do to get better? Uh, at the moment, I'm... Um kind of happy i joined hjc when i did because i feel like i'm getting in on the ground floor we're making some serious moves to upgrade uh the change of the format now that we're getting more competitive with our news stories we're putting them out as soon as we can instead of just with our daily posts at 4 30 um i think if we stay diligent in doing that we have a chance to be someone's one-stop shop for all their hockey news and i think it could turn into something big for us um i think we definitely have to be better about keeping our finger on the pulse of the hockey world and getting news out and even like 
strolling through Twitter and finding things that maybe other big sites haven't gotten yet. Like I know we uh, got a lot of hits on Reddit the other week when we posted that picture of the uh, USA Olympic what jersey. I'm I'm really hoping isn't the actual U.S. <laughs> hockey jersey because you two Canadians can sit up there and laugh about it all you want. I don't want my country represented by something that looks like a bad background piece from a Grateful Dead tribute band. <laughs> so, someone posted something. I didn't know the insurance company, but it looked exactly like an insurance company logo. And oh, uh, I don't uh, doubt it. I thought it was, it, it's pretty funny, but you know, I, I do applaud them. Maybe not applaud team USA, but they are trying something for an Olympics that not a lot of people in the States or North America in general will be watching. Prime time will be at two, three o'clock in the morning on the East coast pretty much. So, yeah, I mean, they're I'm, taking, they're taking a risk now. Maybe well, less people are going to be viewing. For me, that is prime time. So <laughs> I'll be up watching the games. <laughs> well, let's move on to uh, some actual hockey news from legitimate hockey teams. And uh, the feel good, st- <laughs> <laughs> the feel good story of the year so far is the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, on Friday, they obliterated the Colorado Avalanche seven nothing. They're now, as of this recording, they're now eight and one on the season. Five straight wins. And first off, uh, we covered this last week, but do we think Vegas can keep up this this rate? Sean, that's tough. That's really tough. I had to think about that for a second. It's because when Subban went down, I think a lot of us took a step back and said, all right, there's no way they can survive on two AHL goaltenders. They have the scoring, but that defense is at best good, but not great. So where's this going to, but no, so far Dansk has been doing his job uh, and the, the goal scoring has been incredible. And it's not like they're playing Colorado every night. They beat Chicago. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's a that's a huge thing for them. Are, are they going to keep this up forever? No, no. Are, are they going to make the playoffs? It's very possible. They beat Chicago and St. Louis in two of their last three wins. So I mean, those are, those are two pretty big teams. They do have wins against uh, Boston and Buffalo. Those are average teams. Two wins against Arizona. Everyone beats Arizona. Uh, of course, they won their first ever game against Dallas, and then of course, most recently against Colorado. Uh, apparently, though, when uh, whenever they win a game and Dansk has been in net, when they win, they play David Bowie's Let's Dance. So that's that's awesome. Good for them. <laughs> um, so I was just doing some research and Calgary, Calgary and Nashville both made the last uh, wild card spots last year in the playoffs with 94 points. So Vegas to hit 94 points this year would need 39 wins in the remaining 78 games. So that's a 39 and 34 record, which if they are as good as they're showing right now, that's doable. Like they could conceivably make a wild card, get a wild card position in the playoffs. TC. I mean, I do think that they have a chance to be a wild card team. Um, Do I see them making it deep into the playoffs? No. Um, but I think part of what is driving them so early on is that I think some of these guys have a bit of a chip on their shoulder by the fact that these teams that they'd been playing for for years didn't see them as someone that they wanted to protect. And granted, there are limited slots, but I think some of these guys are out there, uh, playing like they have proof, like to show the teams, Hey, you got rid of me, and this is what I could have done for you, but now I'm doing it for Vegas. Yeah, exactly. And if you look at their next four games, they're, they are heading out on the road. But I would say three of them are very winnable. Uh, they have the Islanders. Then they have the Rangers. Easy win. <laughs> and then they have uh, Islanders, Rangers, Bruins, Senators. They're actually on the road for six straight. But that's this coming week. I could con- they could conceivably go three and one if they keep this rate up, and even two and two. I mean, a five hundred record the rest of the way would keep them in a playoff hunt. They're in the Pacific Division. That's not a very strong uh, division right now. I mean, you're getting so many games against Arizona, 
Uh, Edmonton hasn't been particularly great so far this year. So, and they're going to, they, don't get me wrong, Edmonton's going to get better. But if you get a couple games in early against them, then that's great. This is, uh, it really seems to me that if this is going to be the year an expansion team makes the playoffs in the first year, it's going to be this year. Yeah. I mean, well, they have Arizona, just looking at their schedule now. By the time we hit December 3rd, they play their fourth game against Arizona. We'll see if Arizona's won a game by that time. Seriously. <laughs> but they have four games by December 4th against Arizona. That it, It's four wins. Like, Look at it legitimately. That's four wins. Yeah, it's four wins. And again, like we're like you said, they they only have to average about a five hundred record to get to a conceivable wild card playoff spot. Like they, the fact that they're getting all of these wins out of the way, even if they just play mediocre the rest of the year, if you have all of these wins to build off of, you're getting a head start on on the other teams for that wild card spot who will be fighting for it until the last minute. Yeah, absolutely. They need some sort of combination that gets them 78 points the rest of the way. And I was I did a couple breakdowns, but they could go 35 wins, 34 losses, four overtime losses. That gets them the 78 points. If you look at that record, that's overall 35 and 38. So that's less than 500 and that could still conceivably get them in the playoffs. So they've they've definitely put themselves in a good position. Let's go to our newest segment now on the show. You know, all four episodes of the show. But <laughs> but we're going to play fake or authentic. And this week, I'll give a statement, and you guys say whether the statement is fake or authentic. Of course, it's all opinion. There's no right answer here. Um, let's touch home with TC here, the New York Rangers. Alain Vigneault will be the first coach fired this season. Fake or authentic, TC? Authentic. <laughs> two, six, like, and, two Vigneault, six and two? Vigneault's been doing so well for so long, and then he it, it's almost like he completely reached his shelf life in the offseason. Like, he has done nothing to inspire confidence in this team. Uh, honestly... As much as I hate to say it, I think it's going to be tough for the Rangers if they continue playing the way that they're playing to make the playoffs this year. They've shown very little like cohesive playing as a team. I, I understand that you've gotten rid of some of your key players in the offseason, but like you still have uh, McDonough. You still have... Zook, you still have Miko Zabinajad. Miko's been doing very well for himself, and I'm glad that they were able to retain him in the offseason, but I just don't see Vigneault lasting that long with the way the Rangers are currently producing. Sean? Fake or authentic? <sighs> I have a hard time thinking that Arizona is not going to fire their coach. <laughs> really? Who is that? I, oh, talk it. Well, he just signed, right? I mean, oh, yeah. But, I mean, just it's such a train wreck. I, I, That's, so I'm going to say fake to it, not because, like, in a, in a perfect world where everything makes sense, it's completely true. Everything TC said, said about at the range is completely true, on top of the fact that they spent the last few seasons signing college, all these college stars, or pursuing college stars, and we're not seeing that so far this year, and their goaltending's been walking to the point where Pavlik is basically going to be their starter at some point this year, as I see it. The problem is, is that there are teams that are worse in terms of locker room cohesion. Montreal is another example. Right. Montreal is picking time bomb in terms of coaching, so we'll see where that goes. But I'm going to say it's it, it's authentic if everything made sense. Okay. See, but I'm I'm going to go ahead and counter you here because. Yes, Arizona has been doing terribly, but Arizona has a legacy of mediocrity at best. The Rangers are used to excellence, and Vino is just not backing it up. And I just don't think that those who are running the show at MSG are going to stand for that. And going back to Arizona, they're, they're comfortable with losing. There's, there's a difference, as I see it, though, is that if you're comfortable with losing, you don't go out and make the deals that Arizona did over the off season. Oh yeah, they were ready to win this year. Those those, those deals are, indicated that they were ready to win this year. 
those aren't those aren't those aren't your average picking up the Chris Pronger contract, picking up the Pavel Datsu contract that we've seen the Coyotes pull when they want to be terrible. No, they they, they these were moves of at least semi quality players. So let's keep going with our faker authentic here, Sean. The Coyotes will leave Arizona before they ever make the playoffs. Fake or authentic? It, 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 I, I, I'm going to say authentic because the way that we look at the NHL conference balancing right now, the West still is one team short. So Arizona is very unlikely to leave for Quebec City. Over the past six months, Seattle... Houston, Milwaukee, Kansas City have all gauged interest at this point. They're going to go there as I see it. I don't see this team making it out of the decade if they play like this. But yeah, there's just there's nothing in that organization that makes me think that they'll make the playoffs. There's nothing right now that makes me think they'll relocate, but I see it more likely than relocating. TC? This is an interesting question for me because yes they are underperforming but i think the vast majority of people who are paying to go see the coyotes play aren't going to see coyotes play they're the snowbirds who have retired from cities in the north to arizona and they're going to see their old teams like detroit or minnesota play And so they've got that solid base of people who really aren't going to care whether or not the Coyotes are going to win or not. And frankly, most of them would probably rather see them lose. On the other hand, the state of Arizona, various cities have shown that they're not exactly that keen on housing an NHL caliber team. Like They got kicked out of Phoenix and now they're in, what is it, Glendale Glendale now? And they're looking yeah. to get out of Glendale because Glendale doesn't want them. There. Yeah, Glendale doesn't want them. So it's kind of similar to the Islanders in that they can't really find a home in their own home territory. Um, I do think that there are viable markets out there. I I doubt that they'll be moving to a Kansas City or Houston but I could conceivably see them going to Milwaukee or Seattle. The Pacific Northwest, they are rabid sports fans, and any team you place there is going to have a following from day one. So I I do see them moving, um, but I don't exactly think it's contingent on whether or not they make the playoffs. I don't I don't see them moving. There's there's just this feeling there that the NHL, and specific, you can put it on Gary Bettman's shoulders, he will do anything to keep Arizona in that market. Just to, there, there must be something going on. He must get The NHL must get some sort of kickback or something, but they will do anything to keep that team in Arizona. And, I mean, TC, you might know, but the, they, they didn't fight as hard to keep Atlanta in Atlanta. You know what I mean? They just c- yeah. kind of said, oh, we can't do anything more here. All right, go on to Winnipeg. But they're not doing that with Arizona. So I, I see Arizona staying in the desert. So, I mean, who knows how long mm-hmm. it'll be, but maybe they'll, make the, maybe they'll make the playoffs one of these days. My personal feeling is that Bettman wants them in Arizona because Bettman is Satan incarnate and Arizona is on hell's doorstep. <laughs> so he just likes having a team close to home. Arizona is a beautiful place. Um, the the only thing is that who the the, the problem is, is that there are people lining up to buy the the Arizona Coyotes, or at least there were. There was a group of people who were saying we're going to make. There was none of that with Atlanta. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Atlanta was it was just it's a, it was a dumpster fire from let's say two thousand three onward. Absolutely. Let's move on to uh, our next fake or authentic. This is a quick one. BX's Superman punch was awesome. Fake or authentic? Fake is Kevin BX is a douchebag. <laughs> from personal experience? Um, from I don't like the Anaheim Ducks because they beat the Jets in the 2015 quarterfinals. Um, and I don't like Ryan Kessler. And Kevin Bieksa went to Anaheim, I think, because Ryan Kessler was there. So when you follow what I think is the biggest douchebag in the NHL, 
you became will become the second biggest douchebag. What if anybody else did that Superman punch? Would it be awesome? Yeah, like if Yager did it, okay, fine. Okay, well, anything Yager does. <laughs> TC, uh, was BX's Superman punch awesome? Uh, I'm going to go fake on this one, mainly because I am more of a Batman fan. <laughs> I have literally been uh, asked to leave an Outback Steakhouse for having a very loud argument with my father in which I said that Superman was a regular person on his planet and then just came to an normal planet it's basically like cheering on someone who came in last in the olympics and then won gold at the special olympics you're not any better you're just lowering the bar but that works because he was an excellent because he was a normal guy on that vancouver team and then he gave the <laughs> wow this uh we the certainly one, got quite deep on stands. we certainly got quite deep on the superman punch here this is fantastic Let's uh, let's uh, pull on uh, Sean's s- strings here. Steve Mason will not complete the season with the Winnipeg Jets. Sean, fake or authentic? He, he played all right today. I mean, they lost, but they lost in overtime to Columbus, so Still I wasn't lost. expecting to win that game anyways. But it's, it's, it's an authentic statement. They'll, if Antti Niemi can find a home, I'm sure Steve Mason can find a home, and the Jets will ship him off to Phoenix, for, to Arizona for a bag of pucks and uh, you know that Pavel Datsuk contract. <laughs> TC, uh, I'm gonna go authentic. You know, I just don't really think that they have the faith in him in Winnipeg, and I I honestly just don't know how good of a fit he is there, and I think he can easily be shipped off. Yeah, well, at this rate, I mean. They may play the whole 20 game mark, which uh, teams usually wait until 20 games to get a good assessment of their team. But I think uh, at this stage, he's what he's played four games. He hasn't won any of them yet. Uh, you can't go too much longer with this. There are other goalies who are cheaper as well, who are out there, who can get the job done. So, yeah, I would have to agree that that's an authentic statement. Uh, let's uh, try this one. The Penguins will three-peat as champions. Fake or authentic, TC? Fake. It's just too hard. That's huh? that's just purely out of spite. <laughs> um, you know, I as as great of a team as they are, I think that going back to back was an astronomically difficult feat for them, and I just don't see a three-peat happening in the modern NHL. There's too much competitiveness. Um, Granted uh, that they've been pretty solid with Matt Murray, but I think Marc-Andre Fleury was kind of the heart and soul of that team. And without him, I just don't know if they have that natural-born leader. Also, um, I'm not too sure. It depends on where they play um, because I, I think if they end up in, say, by some miracle, they end up uh, playing against Nashville again. Uh, I I don't know if I can see Nashville dropping another one to the Pens. Yeah, Sean. It's it's no, they won't three P just for the simple reason that uh, I can't think of a plausible scenario where Matt Murray plays the entire playoff straight through, and seeing who their backup is right now. Who is it? There's, it's Antti Niemi. Well, or no, no he, sorry, it's not Antti Niemi. He was picked Shit, up. It's a guy from the AHL. I don't even know who they have in their system. It's so, exactly. It's some nobody, and they're yeah. probably you know I could there's a, there's a reality where they go and get take Steve Mason. <laughs> okay, the, quick on the fly one. Would you rather have Niemi or Mason right now? Niemi. Niemi. All right. <laughs> now let's go back to our original topic here. Uh, fake or authentic, the Golden Knights will make the playoffs. Sean. Authentic. That division is too bad. Four free wins in a year is enough for a team to make the playoffs. TC. I say authentic. Again, they're in a very cupcake division. I think the wild card is there for the taking. Um, they've done a great job of building up a solid foundation, and now they – basically have to glide through to take over that wild card spot. 
Okay. I'll take, uh, we're going to cover this topic extensively, but uh, we're running a little long here. So I'll throw it in the fake or authentic game. The NHL's concussion protocol is a joke right now. Fake or authentic, TC? Authentic. I, I will cover it more when we go into it further, but I wrote a research paper on CTE uh, during one of my summer courses, and the NHL is handling it as poorly as can be. Sean? I Authentic, and I know why you're referencing this. It's the Jonathan Quick scenario. Uh, that's a joke as far as I'm concerned. It, regardless of if Quick actually had a concussion or not, Darcy Kemper should have played the rest of that game. And I was surprised, right, reading the box scores to see that Kemper didn't even make a save. Yeah, well, they used to. There used to be all sorts of talk about he's going to have to go to the quiet room. He, you know, he needs to spend 15, 20 minutes in the quiet room. That does, you don't hear that anymore. There's no talk of that. Um, so it's very. It seems like everyone's on the honor system, and when it comes down to wins or losses, nobody is going to stick to the honor system. So yeah, it's uh, it is that's a f- authentic statement because right now it is in shambles. Uh, let's go to the HJC mailbag. 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 All right, Sean, you got a, a question here for the mailbag about goalies. Yeah, so I wanted to know what everybody's favorite and least favorite goalie from your favorite organization is, and I'm asking Ryan this because he has a lot to choose from. Yes, uh, being a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, goaltending has not been our strong point. Well, Freddie Anderson has nailed it down now, it seems. But the 10 years prior to that, uh, it was a tough era. Uh, the 80s was pretty tough, too, because I was a carousel of the goalies. But I will say my least favorite Toronto Maple Leafs goalie of all time is Vesa Don't Call Me Red Light Toskla. Uh, he was absolutely terrible. He hated his time here. He never was uh, terribly consistent. The Leafs never won or made the playoffs when he was here. Uh, he was supposed to be the savior, not the savior, but he was supposed to be what Freddie Anderson is doing, and he didn't do it. Uh, favorite goalie for the Leafs? This is just personal preference because I always liked his equipment. Felix Potvin. And, of course, he let me down when I lined up for two hours to get his autograph, and then he went and charged me 20 bucks as a kid to, for him to write his name on a piece of paper. And ever since then, I've never really cared about anyone's autograph. But thanks, Felix. You're awesome. Sean? Sure. I'll... Uh, favorite goalie in Winnipeg Jets slash Atlanta Thrashers history is obviously Andre Pavlik. It's not just because he waved to me at Toronto's first, at Winnipeg's first game in Toronto. Uh, it's just more like, yeah, he was inconsistent, but he was when he was on fire, he was on fire, and uh, he got us to the playoffs that one year. Least favorite, uh, probably Byron Defoe, and I like Byron Defoe, but as a Thrasher, he was just painfully useless. Oh, you're including Thrashers. Okay, all right, that's fine. I thought you might have gone with the original Jets like you had Bob Essenza or uh, Rick Tabaracci at your disposal. I, 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 nothing wrong with those guys. I mean, my favorite original Jets goalie is Pokey Reddick, but... Uh... Reddick, very nice. Very good. I love these references that nobody will get. Go check Hockey DB, everyone. TC, favorite and least favorite goalie for your franchise? Uh, least favorite goalie for the New York Rangers. I think everyone knows what I'm about to say before I say it. Dan Blackburn. A perennial underachiever like if if you look at his numbers he he doesn't look as bad as he looks when you actually watch him like if you look at his numbers if he had been a goalie maybe five ten years before he would have been great but the fact is he just wasn't a good enough goalie for the era he was playing in and you know, he was just a waste of a roster. They actually, we we were talking about uh, favorite NHL costumes earlier in the staff group chat. And I said, does Dan Blackburn dressing up as a goalie count? <laughs> um, favorite New York Ranger goalie? I'm going to have to go with Andre Pavlik. <laughs> <laughs> just to spite Sean? No, obviously it has to be Hank. Henrik Lundqvist is the king of New York and... He's he's been my hero for the entirety of my hockey watching career. The man does phenomenal things in and he does phenomenal things for the community. So I don't think there's anyone else you can name. 
Yeah, Henrik Lung- Lungfist def- definitely has a fantastic reputation of uh, being a community guy. As an older guy, uh, would have I would have put uh, Johnny Van Beesbrook there. Always loved his bucket that he wore on the ice, especially in the late 80s. John Davidson, I wasn't alive to watch him play, but he's a fantastic commentator. Uh, Mike Richter, of course, was tremendous. Enjoyed Glenn Healy because I got to go to his house one time, and he answered the door in his underwear and gave me hockey cards. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he, he lived pretty close to me. And uh, actually, a good buddy of mine uh, got his Islanders blocker and catcher after the big playoff run that the Islanders had in 93. So that was pretty cool. Um, if, if if we're going off of buckets for Rangers, I got to go Gratuni the loony. <laughs> Dude, that lion mask was phenomenal. <laughs> that would have, if you're going into shootout and you see that staring you down. There's going to be nothing but a puck in his glove and a brown streak following you down the ice. <laughs> Where's the love for Eddie Jockham here? Like, how old are nowhere, you? Nowhere. Nowhere. I'm not old. I just, I. Sean, you're the youngest person here, and you're naming people. Why don't we bring up Mackley? <laughs> did Did Jockham even wear a bucket? Uh, he wore a. To my knowledge, he wore a blank. It was a literal leg. bucket. A literal a bucket. Literal a bucket. steel bucket. <laughs> oh, he was maskless. Just cut but two he eye holes maskless in it. 72 games a year for those Rangers, and you aren't thankful one bit. That's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Like, literally, I would have liked to have seen someone should take the description of a helmet as bucket literal and just cut two eye holes in a bucket, throw it over their dome, go out on the ice, and see how they do. I'm going to tell my... Son's goalie to do that. They're five years old. It should go really well. Anyways, guys, uh, thanks for joining us here. Uh, just before we go, uh, I want to remind everyone that we do have some decently cool shirts available. Jersey Casual. Uh, we are all going Jersey Casual when we do these podcasts. It's a running joke. You can't see us, but we all wear jerseys. It's fantastic. And we also have HJC stickers available. You can put them anywhere. I put mine on my computer. So that if I ever have to go on a TV show, you won't see the brand of the computer. You'll just see HJC, which, as we all know, is very likely to happen. All the writers got stickers. Sean, where'd you put your stickers? Mine's sitting on the back of my MacBook. TC? Uh, I have one on my laptop and one on my boat. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Careful, because those ones are not water resistant. There's rumors of have, some stickers floating around that are water resistant and they're great literally for boats. floating around. <laughs> so those are coming. If they turn out to be successful, we're going to hear back from some other teams. Uh, the HJC boat stickers will be available soon. Keep your eyes open for those. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, uh, click thumbs up on YouTube. Uh, if you want to contribute to the conversation, comment. Also comment on the blog. Uh, You can subscribe to our channel to get notifications when these go up weekly. Thanks for listening, Sean. TC, thanks for joining me this week. Thanks for having me. Be here. All right, good stuff, guys. And we'll talk to you all next week, episode five, next week, HJC Podcast. See you later, everyone.